This next function has been around in Photoshop for quite a long time, but for quite a while it was not obvious and a lot of people didn't even realize it was non-destructive because of the way it was applied. And it's a function called blend if sliders. It's technically part of layer styles, but it's an overall blending option of how we can blend layers together. So I'm going to show it to you in a couple of different ways. First of all, an example that you'd probably never actually do, which is putting a gradient on top of a photograph, but I just want to show you this is how it works, and then we'll look at a couple of examples of how we can start to play with a little bit. So in this example, let's create a new layer, and I'm just going to make a big oval that will fill with a black to white gradient, just so you can see exactly what's happening here. Okay, let's put it right up at the top. Okay, so to access the blend if sliders, double click to the right of the layer, it brings up the layer style dialog box, but you'll see it, we're not, we didn't click on any of these individual styles. We're in this overall general blending options where we can choose things like blend modes and opacity like we can in the layers panel, but also down at the bottom here, you'll see it says this layer and underlying layer, and each one has a slider. Now let me point out to you that it just happens that I used a black to white gradient, but that's not why this little bar is black to white. It always looks like this. So as you'll see as we progress along, it's always dark end, light end. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that this is a gradient. But I did this specifically so you can kind of see what's happening here. If I take the black end of this slider and move it up, you'll see how this whole area has now become see-through. So I'm basically saying to Photoshop, take any pixel that's darker than this to the left of this and make it transparent. And I can put it back again. And if I take the white end, we'll do the same thing. If I drag it, it'll say take any pixels that are brighter than this and make those appear transparent. Now you may have noticed, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the photograph itself, that when I move that slider, look at the edge of that. It tends to be have a slightly jagged edge, and that's because it's so pixel specific that you will notice this pixel is see-through, this pixel isn't, so often the edge looks a little jagged. And there is a solution for it, and it's probably about the least intuitive thing you've ever seen in Photoshop, because I'm not sure why they did it this way, but if I look really closely at this, you'll see each triangle has a little white line in the middle. That's actually the way that Adobe indicates that if you hold down the Option or Alt key, you can split the triangle into two halves. You see what's happening now? Now it's being much more gradual. So this is one of the ways where I can attempt to make a softer edge. Now there are some people that think this should happen automatically. Unfortunately, Adobe isn't one of them. So, but this is one of the ways that we can make an adjustment. Now if I were to click OK, this has, was introduced in the last couple of versions of Photoshop. So in the past there was really no indication that you used blend if slider, so you just had to remember I did that. So this little indicator means something has happened. So this also suggests that it becomes another non-destructive technique because I can double click on it and see what I did and also change it. Now we also have underlying layer and this can be interesting because now it says let me take any thing which is darker and make it start to push through. So now I'm saying take anything darker than this and make those areas start to push through that top layer or the same on the other end. Now, as I mentioned before, putting a gradient on top of a photograph, probably not the most practical reason of why we might do this. But here's a little more practical example. I have a type layer, I'm trying to mock up a magazine cover, and I want to make it look like some of these letters are going behind her head. Now ultimately, I would probably want to make a layer mask and paint on it and be very careful, but that could take a while. So one of the things I like about the blend if sliders is they're very fast. You'll be able to tell almost instantly if it's going to work or not because you can see the results right away. You may have to tweak it down the road, but at least if you want to show someone this is kind of the idea of what it's going to look like or for your own use to see if you like it, here's how I could do that. Here's my type layer. Oh, and by the way, sorry I interrupt myself, but this is only worth trying if there's enough contrast of, of shades of colors. In other words, if she had reddish hair and the word fashion was red, there's probably less chance of it working. So the fact that the word is fairly dark and her hair is fairly light means at least I have a shot of it working. All right, so now we double click on it 
and I want to take the underlying layer and start to push it over. Now, I don't know if you're watching where my mouse is, but watch over here. You can see at a certain point, that's actually looking not too bad. I'm going to hold down Optional to split the triangles, and I can even get some of those smaller. That was a bit too far. There we go. Now, is it perfect? It's not, but it's also not bad. And most particularly for me, it's a great way to be able to say to someone really quickly, this is what I had in mind. What do you think? Or again, if you're just doing work for personal projects, this gives you an opportunity to try something, continue to do several steps, and then realize if you don't like it, you can always come back to the blended sliders and get rid of them. So one of the ways that I often use this is when I'm trying to do some blending of photographs. So in this case, I have a photograph and I want to put some texture over the top. And I could just try a blend mode, which does that overall, and that's kind of cool. But one of the things that I like to do, especially when I see a photograph that has areas of dark or light in it, is double click and then say, okay, let's take the underlying layer and just to sort of push a lot of the dark areas through. Now, already that's looking kind of interesting to me. And then I take maybe this layer and start to get the white areas start to show drop out. And then let's use that slider and take this one here, maybe a little bit. I don't have any specific plan in mind. And by the way, at this point, you could still say, and what happens if I also use multiply mode? So now we're having the ability to say, I want to do two things. I want to blend if and change opacity. But both of those factors, of course, can be edited. I can change the blend mode back to normal and I can double click to put this back the way it was. Now, later on, we'll talk about camera raw smart objects. And one of the ways I particularly like to use blend if sliders is keeping the editability of camera raw for both the texture and the underlying photo, create those blend that blend if slider blending, knowing that I can still tweak the settings for the layer itself by going jumping back into camera raw. But we'll talk about that later on. But for many situations, the blend if sliders offers a really nice solution to do things very quick and easily. The one thing we have to keep in mind is it's just an illusion that things are transparent. In other words, let me show you an example here. I've opened a logo that someone sent me and I go to put it on a photograph. And one of the common problems that we have, of course, is someone sent us a photograph, which is JPEG, so it has all this white. So how do I get rid of the white? Well, one potential option would be to just change the blend mode. It gets rid of the white, but you see now you can't really see the logo anymore. And I don't really want to sit here and take some tool like the magic wand or something and get rid of all of it. So instead, I would just double click on this layer, start to move this white triangle, move it far enough, and then maybe split the triangle. And there we go, now the red has gone. However, Technically, the white is still there, and that shows because if I tried to add, for example, maybe, I don't know, an outer glow so this thing showed a little better, you can see the problem is the outer glow is going around the outside of the whole thing. So that's the one downside to the blend if sliders. One of the downsides is that it, it just creates the effect of something being transparent, but it isn't really. So if you really needed it to be transparent, and this would take away some of the non-destructiveness, but at least it would give you the ability to move ahead. So for example, in this case, I know I want to permanently get rid of the white. I would add a new layer below, hold down Command or Control and click on the new layer button. That adds the layer below. Then come up here to the top layer and merge down. Now, the blend if sliders are out of the picture because this is now permanent. So you can see if I added that outer glow, it's adding it to the whole thing, all the holes and everything else. The other thing to keep in mind with blended sliders is that it's non, it's global. In other words, if I had a photograph with uh, a house and I was trying to get rid of the blue shutters, anything that was blue would be affected. So it would affect the sky. And so it's, it's almost maddeningly so because there'll be times where you're like, oh, this blended slide is going to work. And all of a sudden it doesn't work because you realize the wrong part is gone. Still, there are plenty of situations where the blend if slider can be a nice way to try something, especially when you're experimenting, and because you know that you don't 
even though in this case you click OK, it's going to show up in your layers panel, which means it can still be edited.